The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next on Life Today, James and Betty encourage us to start living in God's fruitfulness. Betty, when we do that, we can overcome a pandemic. We can overcome anything. I'm going to tell you something. This entire Old Testament is picture after picture of the people of God being blessed by God when they lived in the shelter and shadow of the Almighty, and they're in a land flowing with milk and honey. I mean, God is just blessing them beyond anything you could ever imagine. Welcome to Life Today. This is about life today, the life that we find when we lose our life in Christ. And by losing it in Christ, Betty, as we've come to understand so much more clearly than most Christians ever understand, you're actually losing your life in God's kingdom purpose to find it. And that kingdom has come. When Christ came, the king came. He's here. He's coming, but he's come. And he's in us. He says, the kingdom of heaven is in us. And another of the same kind is in us, Jesus. He said, I have to leave you being in person with you. How do you get better than that? I'm going to leave and I'm one place at a time. But I'm going to be in you, the same Jesus, in millions of people all over the world, the same Jesus, the Holy Spirit, You know, when we're talking to him, Betty, we don't have to wonder if he's here and he's in the room with us. He's not only in the room with us, he's in us. That's right. And he wants us to live as overcomers. He does not want us to live overcome. That doesn't mean we can't be overcome because the moment we walk out of the shadow and shelter of the Almighty, we're overcome. We're overwhelmed. The minute we believe a lie, the minute we listen to the father of lies through somebody, and you can hear him in school, from the most sophisticated, high-sounding professors. And you will hear it in the political realm, and you will hear it in the business realm, and you will be taught to take advantage of other people rather than let God use you to make a kingdom impact on everybody you come around. Betty, this is an incredible book. It's God's Word. You see, I got this all marked up here with Mm -hmm. y'all. I got nearly every page on this particular one. It's been rebound twice. I come back to it sometimes because I know where stuff is on the page. I always remember right where it is. I may not even remember the exact chapter. Sometimes I don't remember the book. I usually I remember that, but I can find the spot. And this is where God is speaking through Nehemiah about how he led them into freedom. And then they went into idolatry. They started worshiping the great blessings of freedom and fruitfulness. And look what he says. And this is just the ninth chapter of Nehemiah. Behold, we, your people, your family, we're slaves today. And as to the land which you gave to our fathers to eat its fruit and its bounty, all the blessings and the prosperity that freedom gives and your principles do and all the great blessings, we're slaves in that very place. And its abundant produce is for the other kings whom you have set over us because of our sins. And they rule over our bodies and over our cattle. And we're in great distress. The enemy, Betty, will take over everything God has given us to bless us once he can get control of it. And, And if you don't keep the king of kings in place, the trespasser, the one that wants to be king, the one that wants to be like God without God, He will take over and lead you into torment and destruction, division, dissension, hatred, animosity, hostility, uh, dividing into tribes and camps and hating and fighting each other. You're not going to organize an organization that's going to stop that. And if you think you're going to start a nice little Christian organization, if that's not part of the church, you say it's a parachurch. A parachurch is not a part of the church. Every part of the church is part of the church, even if it's doing something by divine assignment that's an important emphasis for the whole body of Christ to understand. That's why we've got to appreciate the giftings and callings on others. But they're not an 
organization. They're a part of the living organism, the one organism, the one force that can tear the gates of hell and their effect from their hinges and set the people free. That's the body of Christ. That's the church of the living God. You're not going to organize a political party. You're not going to start an organization that's going to correct our course. The church demonstrating the power of God, the truth of God, the transforming, restoring power of God, that's the only hope the world's got. That's the only hope freedom has. I remember when an Orthodox Jew walked out of this studio last year, standing room only, crowded, and this Orthodox Jew was shouting, he's a Jew. He's Orthodox Jewish. He said, the only hope for freedom in the world are Christians. The only hope for freedom in the world are Christians. His name is Dennis Prager. He shouted it. That is the only hope. And it's more than just Christians, Dennis. It's the body of Christ. Those that are plugged in, connected, each member honoring the others, supplying the need, appreciating one another, not cutting them off, not amputating, scattering body parts, bringing us together, each member connected, some directly, some indirectly, but all of them connected, submitted to the head Christ. And Betty, when we do that, we can overcome a pandemic. We can overcome <laughs> anything. I'm going to tell you something. This entire Old Testament is picture after picture of the people of God being blessed by God when they lived in the shelter and shadow of the Almighty and when they walked in the Word and they hid the Word in their mind and in their hands and they didn't worship idols. They didn't even worship the blessings of all the benefits of a fruitful land. But once they began to put something between them and God, the gates of hell and deception begin to come in and take over. It's like the wolves coming into the flock of the shepherd that's lazy or indifferent or he's not watching, and they destroy the flock. They scatter them and they murder them. That's the way, that's the, way the father of lies operates. That's the way the murderer operates. That's the way the wolves, that's the way the predators attack the people in purpose of God. And when we don't have the shelter of the Almighty and the shadow of the Almighty and the hedge of His Word, we need walls and hedges. God said He set the boundaries of the oceans to keep them under control because only the hurricane and the tsunami going past the borders that God established destroys. Every border God puts up, His Word is a hedge of truth. When you tear the hedge down, when you cast it aside, when you change the truth into a lie, you are vulnerable to all the deceptive tactics of the crafty enemy, Satan himself, and you find yourself in bondage. Betty, to say all hell broke out against America at the first of last year almost sounds like an understatement. About the same time. And I'm telling you, you talk, you talk about the beasts of the field. You talk about the pestilence. You talk about the destroyer coming in like a flood. When our nation had just reached economic blessings, like you just couldn't even imagine. And when you had the minorities having more jobs and people that in all these different races, whether it was Asian or Hispanic or African-American, jobs and opportunity and taxes reduced, but beautiful blessings coming. It wasn't because of somebody that was courageous enough to fight. It was because they put principles back in place that are irrefutable. When you put certain principles in place, you don't just have to read those principles in the Bible. The foolishness of depending upon some source other than God. Birds have enough sense to depend upon God, but they get up every day and go to work. They don't wait for somebody to come feed them. God has taught us the truth. This entire Old Testament shows you what happens when people that were never supposed to be in bondage are set free from bondage and they're in a land flowing with milk and honey. I mean, God is just blessing them beyond anything you could ever imagine. But they began to worship the blessings, not just the ugly. They began to worship even the magnificent. Whatever we put between us and God makes us vulnerable to the deception. It makes us vulnerable to the pandemic. This pandemic was birthed, first of all, in the heart and mind of the devil, the destroyer, the murderer. But it was carried and launched by a nation that has denied God, a nation that is anti-God, anti-freedom as we know it, anti-freedom as the Bible teaches it. And it spread throughout the world. You've got to look at Joel. I want all of you to, I want you to get Joel 
and I mean, I just want you to concentrate on it. Consecrate a fast. This is in the first chapter. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the elders, all the inhabitants of the land. Cry out, for the day of the Lord is near, a day of destruction. Man, this is so unbelievable. What happens? These locusts came in. I mean, it's, it's like the liars. It's like the pandemic. It's like the COVID came in. Whew. And it didn't just hit America. It hit the world. It was released like a scourge. And he began to destroy. Now look how God described this enemy. Baby, these are locusts devouring. This is like the wolves devouring the flock. It's like the birds of the air attacking the flock. It's like the weeds and the pestilence and the briars attacking the crops. Only they devour it. And God then describes this visitation. He says, blow a trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. The day of the Lord is coming. What is this? This is a day when you're going to see in clear revelation manifestation the effect of the enemy when he takes over. When disease, dissension, death, division, worshiping something other than God, including people. We do not follow a personality. We get every personality to submit to the principles of God. If they do, the people are blessed and that personality can be far from perfect. But the principles work because they're God's principles and history confirms them and you can see the blessing and effect of good principles in place and the horrors when they're not in place. He said, warn the people. There's never been anything like this. I mean, we've heard that so many times. Never been anything like this before. Well, here it is. It's a garden of Eden in front of them. But a flame burns and it's a desolate wilderness behind them. This is chapter two. This is verse three. The enemy comes, it looks like horses. It looks like war horses. It looks like chariots. In other words, they're forces of power. And by the way, those forces of power are ready to lurch on this nation and on freedom all over the world. Don't you ever doubt that. It's a reality. Look what they do. They come in like a fire. They're ready for battle. People are in anguish. Before them, they pale. These enemies run like mighty men. They climb on the wall like soldiers. They march in line. They don't deviate from their paths. They don't crowd each other. All of these enemies of the truth, strange bedfellows, all different kind of people, they fit together in perfect step to attack the purpose of God and the freedom that God offers and the fruitfulness that those principles bring to pass and the blessings that they bring when they're put in place and practiced and respected and honored. And you don't change those truths into a lie and profess to be wise and prove you're a fool. And the whole world can tell you're foolish. You even look foolish. Your countenance testifies against you. But they come like soldiers and like mighty men and they burst through the defenses, not breaking ranks, rush on the city, rush on the wall, climb in the houses, enter through the windows like a thief and destroy Betty, here's what God says. In the midst of all this distress, return to me. Yes. Chapter 2, 12. With fasting and weeping and mourning, Jeremiah said, Over my head where waters in my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Betty, he also said something else. I just wish I could go off and hide. I wish I had a wayfarer's lodging place. I want to get out of here. That is one impulse we can have. It's not the right impulse, Jeremiah. Oh, that my head were waters. Weeping is the right impulse. Running off and hiding. No, no, no. Get that light up on that lampstand. Get the people to stand together in supernatural unity like a mighty army, not with weapons of the flesh or boasting in their numerous warriors and how big our block is. No, how big our God is how magnificent he is, what his truth does to transform and to meet every need in our lives all over the world and even change and bless the enemies of truth when they see the beauty and magnificence of it, of it in the people of God. So return to me. Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord. He's gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness, relenting of evil, who knows but what he would turn and leave a blessing. Blow the trumpet in Zion. 
consecrate a fast, a solemn assembly. Betty, much of the blessings we saw in the last four years were because people like you and others you know had called a solemn assembly. Yours might have been a very small assembly. Many times it might have just been you. You feel like you're the only one praying. But God Almighty was hearing your prayers. Every one of those solemn assemblies God heard. God began to move mountains. He began to pour out his blessings on this nation. And they were spinning over to the world. The enemy, Satan, the liar, the murderer, the divider, he had to stop it. And he sent this pestilence. Yes, he did. Yes, God allowed it to happen. And it was because we had allowed the boundaries and the hedge of God to be pulled down. And we'd changed his truth too often into a lie. And we not only did those things against God and against nature, Romans 1, not only did them, but we gave hearty approval. We began to approve it in our laws, in our schools, in our entertainment, in our political arena. But God was changing it. And let me show you what he says. Do not miss this, please, please, please. If you will pray, humbling yourself and return to me. I will make up to you for the years, the swarming locusts, the pandemic, the pestilence is eaten, the creeping locusts, the stripping locusts, the gnawing locusts, my great army, which I sent among you. When you cast aside my truth and my hedge. The consequence is you are given up, given up, given up three times in Romans 1 to all these processes. And then in the end, you're not only doing it, but you're giving approval to it. It comes national approval. This has to change. If you will return to me, I will make up to you for the years the locusts have spent and I will pour out on you the former and latter rains. Betty, every book in this Old Testament where the prophets are talking to the people of Israel, every time he said, if you return, you will again grow grain, you'll be fruitful, you'll again have flocks, you'll again have fruit. I want to bless you with kingdom reality as overcomers prevailing against the gates of hell, not being walked on by the tormentor, but walking over the tormentor, Jesus said, over the enemy's intentions, like dust under our feet. And we don't do it arrogantly. We do it with gratitude, God. You showed us glimpses of healing when in answer to prayer and the courageous stand of some people, fearless and tireless, you restored principles, important principles, and everyone was benefited except the enemy, the one who wants to attack the truth. Father, you promised you'll make up for the years this pandemic has taken, and I believe it. In Jesus' name, listen to me. Only one force, not an organization, a living organism, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. That's the only power and the only people that can stop the enemy's intentions. And he can do it. Betty, that's the reason our viewers have become part of life today and life outreach. You believe God. You trust God. You're selling out for kingdom impact. All of our viewers, Betty, have told us that when we show them the least of these and the overlooked and the forgotten, they can't overlook them. That's right. They see them through the eyes of Jesus. I know you didn't get to speak much and <laughs> preach much today. You bear witness with what your husband shared. Absolutely, shared. absolutely. You believe our viewers want to help put arms around the overlooked? I know they do. They've done it before and I know you'll do it again. <laughs> Let's give people water right now for life. Watch very closely. And then you be the hands of Jesus. Be the miracle today. Because we're going to see God make up for the years the pandemic has taken. Watch closely. You're going to be somebody's miracle today. Beyond anything they ever dreamed, you're going to be the miracle.
We've been here in Cambodia now with our team for about a week, listening to stories from mothers, just story after story. And there seems to be one common theme, heartbreak. In fact, just this morning, we heard another one of those stories here. I'd like to share that with you right now. เออบะนั่นไงมือมาชื่อเมียจะบ่ายจังตกแปดมืออกหลายมือให้กระทามืออดเจียบ่งนะเมียนสะจัวมุยตังละอตังไอ้นั่นเจียมุยจะเจ็
and give water to 10 people the rest of their life, please do it. That's where most of the support comes, or $144, give 30 people water. Whatever you can do, do God's will on earth by giving water for life. Please do it. Go to the phone or go online, use that bank card like a check. We have some beautiful gifts to send you, but you're giving the gift of life. Dirty, disease-filled water. How desperate would a mother need to be to consider giving this contaminated substance to her child? For many mothers and their families living in extreme poverty, this is their only choice. But with your help, they won't have to make this choice ever again. Mission Water for Life provides clean, disease-free water for thousands of children and their families, giving them a life free from the fear of death. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10, $72 will provide for 15, and $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we'll send you Speak Your Name, devotions and declarations on the reality of Jesus. Filled with stunning imagery, these 40 encouraging devotions by Lainey Renee serve as a reminder of the power of Jesus' name. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Be Refreshed picture. This beautiful ceramic picture is decorated with Proverbs 11.25 and is sure to make a lovely addition to your table or home. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our brand new inspiring bronze sculpture, Divine Servant. Please call, write, or make your gift online. What, you, what you've heard is gonna continue now. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what if we the people of God do, what he's gonna do. This beautiful little girl right here, it's a granddaughter. And uh, we got uh, five of them and now a bunch of great, great granddaughters. But this is, she's just full of Jesus. And I'm telling you, bless you. Thank you so much. Hey, he wants to make up for the years the pandemic ate. And he is so anxious and so able. Let's get on with it. Are you concerned about keeping your family well-equipped to manage your resources when you pass away and leaving a lasting legacy? Contact Life Planning Services today. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.